Hello everyone, this is Hoda Ganji. In this video, I'm going to work on a small warehouse modeling. Uh, I would like to mention that the design of this warehouse and all the drawings belong to Mr. Yase Gorka, and I'm only modeling it in Revit today. Uh, so basically, it's a rather small warehouse, it's two stories. Um, the structure is mainly steel, the foundation is of course concrete. Uh, we'll go step by step. So first, we are going to model the initial building footprint on the provided site with the provided setbacks. So this is the site plan. Um, and on the right side, from the east side, we have 8 meters setback and 6 meters from the south side. So we already have this plan is given to us. Um, by the way, the orientation is set to Project North, so that's already set. That's a different uh, content. If you change it to True North, this is True North, but we're going to work on Project North. So on the right side, we're going to have a setback of uh, 8 meters here. So I'm going to go maybe with a reference plane. RP is a shortcut for reference plane. Uh, actually, before that, I'm going to escape it. I'm going to type UN. Check the units. You see that we are going with meters, zero decimal places. That makes sense because on the field you cannot measure lower than one millimeter, so zero decimal place makes sense. OK and OK. RP. I'm going to pick this line, offset it by 8,000. So I'm going to click once here. And from the south side is 6,000 millimeters from this end. So the corner of this building must not get more to the right and to the bottom from here. Uh, and after that, we can uh, maybe draw another uh, reference plane here. I'm going to draw one more RP draw a line starting from the intersection here going up and on this side is 25300 if I zoom in here it's basically out to out dimensions and out to out dimensions on the width so it's 25300 I'm gonna go with another RP pick this line 25 300 millimeters one click here and on the other side it's 9700 and I'm gonna pick this line okay if you want to measure you can type di just measuring here 25300 9700 8000 and 6,000. So this is exactly what we have here. Okay, so step one is done. Step two, uh, or actually the rest of step one, we're going to use a conceptual mass here to show where the building would go. So uh, back here, massing and site, I want to create uh, in place mass. But before doing the mass, I want to show you that this building has an office space. It also has an industrial space. So we have two functions here, right? Uh, for now, I can just go with one big mass, but we might need to change it later, right? Uh, and let's see, the main use is uh, industrial, it's a warehouse. Uh, I'm going to create yeah, in place mass. Okay, I'm gonna name it warehouse. Okay, and we can just draw it here from this corner all the way to this corner. Create form, finish mass. This is the mass. Okay, so this is where the building would go. Next, add horizontal datum and grid as per hard copy. So what does it mean? We're going to add the grids. Uh, 
Before adding the grids, make sure that you consider that from the first grid to the very end of the building is 350 millimeters on both ends, right? So I'm going to go with another reference plane, 350 millimeters inside on this side, also 350 millimeters on the other side. So we're going to go with RP and I'm going to go with select the line 350 millimeters, one on this side, one there. Make sure that you click inside. Okay, so the first grid is going to be there. Now we can start drawing the grids. I'm going to suggest that for the grids we uh, move to level one. I'm going to draw from left to right grid number one, two, three, and four. A200, A200, A200. So uh, before we continue, I'm going to suggest close the drop down menu for ceiling plans so you wouldn't get confused. We're going to go with level one and floor plan. So I'm going to go with uh, architecture grid. Uh, I'm going to start from, let's say, bottom to top, so it's going to automatically put the bubble at the top, although we can always change that. So, uh, for the first time I followed the reference plane, I'm going to name this as number one. Okay, I can use the shortcut GR for the grid, pick this one, 8200 was the span, grid number two three and four and you see that the fourth one exactly ends up on the reference plane that's how it should be on the other side we have grid a and b going from top to bottom uh, if by any chance you wanted to have the bubble on this side you could use the check mark here I can also move this line down so the grid goes a little bit uh, lower. I can go with GR again and I'm going to draw one grid here. This is going to be our grid A. So I'm going to change this to A. Automatically it's going to name the other one B. And how much further is B? is basically 9,000 millimeters, 9 meters. So I'm going with GR, select this one. Instead of 9,000, I can type 9M. It knows that I mean 9 meters. One click here, that's grid B. Okay. Uh, usually on levels, we put this on fine level of details. It's something that's going to affect our details later. Just double checking, I would like to type DI for dimension and I would like to get some dimensions here. So it's all as we want it. Okay, 9000 and 2350s, that's all good. And next we're going to add the levels actually. How do we add the levels? We are going to use the section. Usually we go with level 1 set to 0. We have the mezzanine at 3800, roof plate at 7400, parapet at 7800, and uh, underside footing at 1600 below grade. It also mentions that uh, parapet does not have a corresponding floor plan, which is okay. Um, you don't need it, right? So I'll show you how it means. Uh, let's go maybe to, I can go with a section or I can do it on south elevation for now. Uh, we have level one here at zero. Our level two is going to be mezzanine. So I'm going to rename it as mezzanine. Yes, I would like to rename the corresponding views and it's going to be 3800. That's good. Next, we're going to go with roof plate 7400 from zero. So if I type LL, 
which is also under architecture level I can pick level 1 and it's going to be 7400 I'm going to double check yes 7400 and I'm going to click here and I'm, then I'm going to change level 3 to roof plate roof PL and yes I would like to rename corresponding views that's good uh, next one is the parapet which is 7800 so I'm gonna go with another LL 7800 again from 0 so I'm gonna click here okay and this level I can click on this add elbow and move this up by moving this point up okay and instead of level 4 I want to mention parapet and yes I would like to change the corresponding views so I want to have level 1 mezzanine and roof plate but I don't need parapet in my views so I'm just gonna right click and erase it delete it now it's gone if you want to bring it back you can go to view plan views floor plan bring parapet back but we don't really need it in our floor plans and one more is underside footing 1600 so I want to go with LL 1600 and I'm gonna click here it says it cannot be seen why is that probably it's because it's outside the crop region so I want to show crop region and maybe I can go with do not crop view at the moment we can always change the crop region, crop region uh, now or later that's why we didn't see it before now that I change the crop region if I, even if I say crop the view we still see level 5 and I'm gonna change the name to underside of the footing and yes rename the corresponding views so the views are named correctly over there uh, if you want you can move all this a little bit away uh, if you see here this is our mass if you want to be really precise you can limit the height to the parapet level so the volume of the mass is now correct it seems that we got all the levels and grids so we are good with this step next adjust conceptual mass for office portion and warehouse portion right so it means that up to grid 3 is going to be my office portion so uh, maybe on level 1 I'm gonna click on the mass move it and I can even lock it to grid 3 and then I can draw another mass so I want to go with uh, massing and site in place mass office and I want to draw a rectangle from this corner to this corner create form finish the mass you can also adjust the height to go all the way to the parapet so this is one mass this is the other mass if you are not sure where the masses go in your project browser they go under families mass office and warehouse this is where you can rename them I have two masses as you see here before we continue I actually want to show you that how this mass floor schedule is created and how we actually use uh, the mass so basically the office as you see here has two levels on level one and mezzanine warehouse goes all the way up that's why it only has um, a floor on level one so this is what I want to do I want to click on one of the masses mass floors 
for the warehouse I just need a floor on level 1 hit OK now if I go in 3D you see that it added a floor on the other one if I go to mass floors for the office on level 1 and mezzanine I have floors right OK so there is two of them and then if I go to my schedules right click new schedule which is also here in view schedules uh, schedule and quantities uh, I can type M so we go to the mass mass floor schedule is what I'm looking for okay what do we want we want it to look like this so we're gonna count how many there are on which level floor area so I'm gonna go with count on which level floor area floor perimeter and volume floor perimeter and volume and the mass type because we mentioned that we have two types you can always move this up and down if you want in the schedule the one at the top would be on the left side of the schedule so this seems all good uh, I'm gonna say OK uh, I can't hit Control plus this is basically our mass floor schedule just like you see it here we have floors for the warehouse on level 1 and for the office on level 1 and mezzanine and the numbers should match what you have here on the floor area which is 162 and 83 that means you have done a correct job uh, if the volume is slightly different it's okay because uh, we haven't adjusted uh, the volumes exactly the heights exactly but the area and the perimeter should exactly match with what we have here uh, I'm gonna stop here and we'll continue with the structural parts uh, in the next video one last thing if you want to see views side by side let's say you want to see level 1 mass floor schedule and 3d at the same time uh, click on one of them WT and TW switch between tile views and tab views this is what we see in level 1 I can hit control negative so it's going to be smaller here and that is what we see in 3D uh, that's it for today uh, thank you so much please like and subscribe for more videos